guys, what's going on? Dr. Frank here, founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching, where we help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and a whole host of other addictions. Remember, for a free course on quitting, check out the website in the description. And if you want to work with our offices one-on-one, call or text the number found in the description. It does cost a small fee. So in today's video, I want to take some time and talk about Delta-8 THC cartridges, which when I say Delta-8, you might be triggered to think about Delta-9 THC, which is the cannabinoid that we most commonly think of when we're discussing cannabis, THC, and nowadays CBD. But before we talk about Delta-8 cartridges and edibles and dabs and whatever else is out there that's circulating on the market, we have to first understand cannabis and something called our endocannabinoid system and cannabinoids. So we're going to start with the basics real quick, just a quick review. So THC or Delta-9 THC comes from the cannabis plant, specifically from the marijuana plant, okay? comes from a cannabis plant. Now, a cannabis plant contains these things called cannabinoids, okay? Cannabinoids are found inside a cannabis plant. They're compounds found inside the cannabis plant. And there's about 100 different types inside of a cannabis plant, okay? The most popular ones to date are THC, Delta-9 THC, and of lately, over the last few years, CBD. So CBD and Delta-9 THC are two cannabinoids found within the cannabis plant. Delta-8 THC is another cannabinoid found within the cannabis plant. Now, different cannabinoids have different benefits and they have different reactions within the human body once they're consumed. For example, most notably, Delta-9 THC has psychoactive effects when it binds to the CB1 receptors on our brainstem. CBD has been shown to have really good anti-inflammatory effects, really good anti-anxiety effects, really good anti-whatever effects, a whole host of things. That's a whole nother video that I'll, I'll make for CBD. Delta-8 THC is being described as a less psychoactive version of Delta-9 THC. Now, how does cannabis work once it's in your body? Why is Delta-9, why does that make us high, THC, and why does CBD not? And this is really important, especially for those of you guys that are under the age of 25 or really anyone who's smoking or consuming Delta-8 right now. So in your body, you have something called your endocannabinoid system. So you actually have a system in your body that functions on cannabinoids, like it relies on cannabinoids to function. And your body makes its own cannabinoids. So your body makes its own CBD, its own THC, its own Delta-8. We don't really know exactly, and no, that's not what the compounds are called in your body, but your body already makes its own cannabinoids. Now, why is this relevant? Because when you take CBD, it helps your body make more of its own cannabinoids. When you consume things that are really high in THC, THC directly binds to this endocannabinoid system and has a direct effect on it. So therefore, somehow, it's impacting your body's naturally produced endocannabinoids. Same thing with Delta-8. It binds directly to this endocannabinoid system. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Well, it really depends. Um, For some people, it's been reported to have anti-nausea, anti-anxiety, help with sleep, help with depression. For other people, maybe people who have gone too far or been smoking concentrates, dabs, things that are really, really, really high concentration THC without something to balance it out, they can experience increased paranoia. And if it gets really bad, they might even experience something called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, which is this type of cyclical vomiting where you continually are throwing up. Maybe you've been to the hospital. No doctors know what's wrong with you. You've been to gastroenterologist. You smoke a lot of weed. You're getting really, really sick. You think the smoking is helping your stomach problems. You think it's going to benefit you. And it's simply making things worse because you have this syndrome called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. Now, this would be a perfect example of something really bad that can happen when our endocannabinoid system is thrown out of whack. 
when our endocannabinoid system becomes damaged. Now, the question becomes, well, what happens in someone who's younger, 14, 15, 18 years old, who's smoking a bunch of weed? What is this doing to their own cannabinoid system? What is this doing to the cannabinoid production? Is it shutting it down? Is it creating more? Well, we don't fully know the answer to that because research hasn't been opened on cannabis until more recently in the last few years, which brings me to my point about Delta-8 products. So Delta-8 products can be counterfeit just like anything else on the market. And we're seeing a lot of plugs on Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be, selling fake Delta 8 products. They're marketing things as Delta 8 because that's the hottest buzz right now when really it has nothing to do with Delta 8 THC. You're buying a cart full of God knows what, and it just says Delta 8 THC on the packaging with all the other BS, third-party tested, organically grown, blah, 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 whatever it is they got to put on there to convince you it's real. And we're seeing this with dabs. We're seeing this with edibles. We're seeing this with carts. I don't know about flour per se, but certainly those other things. It, it's, it has nothing to do with Delta 8. It's just being marketed as Delta 8. Now, even if you are getting real Delta 8, this is a really modified, not modified, but a super isolated form of a cannabinoid found in the cannabis plant. Now, if you're a fan of cannabis, like I am, I don't smoke, but I, I appreciate the plant, you appreciate it, in my opinion, in its natural form, in the way it was created. When we start to isolate things and we really when we really start to modify them that when when mankind really starts to get involved and extract something and then intensify that something like we're doing with delta 8 I think that's when bad things happen. Cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome really wasn't a big thing until we started seeing the blow up of dabbing and extracts and carts and things like that. Really, really high concentration THC. So Delta-8, something that's found in a really minuscule amount within, an, uh, within a cannabis plant in its natural state, its ungenetically modified state, now we're taking this and we're isolating it and we're giving it to people in really high concentrations. I don't know what the consequences of that are going to be, especially on someone who's younger, who doesn't have a fully developed endocannabinoid system. Moreover, we have no idea what the consequences are going to be on someone who's older because the research out there just doesn't exist. But I can tell you, I don't like it. I don't like Delta 8 because we're taking something that's found in a really small quantity in an incredible plant and we're really modifying, we're really extracting the heck out of it to intensify its effects. And I have a feeling this is a bad thing. I have a feeling this is not the intended use of our body's endocannabinoid system. And I'm not getting religious on you guys or anything like that, but I really don't think this is a good thing. And I'm going to guess people are going to watch this video a few years from now, maybe 10 years from now when they actually care about this topic. And they're going to say, wow, maybe this crazy guy was right. Now, lastly, a lot of people who are watching my videos, they're here because they're struggling with addiction. So whether you're addicted to Delta-8, Delta-9, medical marijuana, dry herb, grass, uh, um, dispensary quality edibles, edibles that your friend made in his basement, I don't care what it is. If you're addicted to the high and you're struggling with a marijuana addiction, it doesn't matter what you're consuming. And in my opinion, you shouldn't be worried about consuming any of these things because we have to work on a different place for you to get a high out of life. We have to work on this addiction. And Delta 8 isn't going to fix it. Delta 9 isn't going to fix it. Okay, you're just jumping from one substance to another. You're falling for it when the plug sends you something on Snapchat or calls you and tells you it's some new Delta 9 and these people are preying on you guys. They're taking advantage of you. And if you're struggling with an addiction, it's important that you realize that. Now, of course, someone who's using it medicinally, uh, I understand that it might have benefit, but sometimes the, the negatives of the addiction can outweigh the benefits. And if that's you, you might want to consider making a consultation with our offices and speaking to us about other options and other things and, and quite frankly, to work on that addiction. So my opinion, don't buy into the Delta 8 carts. Don't buy into the Delta 8 products. 
I think this is really going to backfire a few years from now. I really do. I think we're messing with an incredible plant, a plant that should not be adulterated and modified and concentrated in the ways that it's being done. And I think it's going to backfire on our endocannabinoid systems. I think we're going to see a large spike in addiction. And I think we're going to see a lot more weird stuff like cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome and other problems along those lines. That's just my guess. If you are struggling with weed, check out the next video, follow me right into it, where I talk about why I quit smoking weed because of carts. I'll see you guys there.